What's going on everyone? Today I'm here to talk about Stab, the TV series, which is the parody of the Scream franchise. And I have to say, this is a pretty masterful parody. The way they poke fun of the ridiculousness of Scream, whether it's randomly name-dropping movies for no reason through awkward monologue, or using their own self-awareness to make fun of themselves for doing the exact opposite of what they're supposed to do to make it a good show. To even the acting, you know, I gotta give props to the comedians that they hired for the show. I love the way that they go all out with poking fun of how cheesy and terrible that acting and horror movies is today. Wait, what? How do you mean it's not a parody? You mean to tell me that we're supposed to take this crap seriously? <laughs> no, Mom, I'll clean my room later, gosh! So going into Scream the TV series, you really didn't know what to expect. Especially since the show has nothing to do with the movies. There's no Sydney. there's no Ghostface. We're not even sure if this is even in the same reality as the Scream movies. So right off the bat, this show was at a disadvantage, being that they're trying to do something completely different with an already beloved franchise. That's why I waited until the third episode to talk about the show, because like they said, TV has to stretch things out, so it takes a few episodes for things to really pick up and develop before you can judge it fairly. So after three episodes, I'm starting to get into the show. My only problem with the show at first was that this felt nothing like Scream. The only elements of Scream that this has are the constant references to movies and TV shows and the phone calls from the killer. Aside from that, everything else was just cheesy teenage drama with stereotypical characters that aren't likable with a backstory that's just typical cliche horror, which is why this felt more like a parody than a Scream series. But as things are starting to pick up and it's becoming more of a slasher and less of a drama, it's starting to feel just a little bit like Scream again. Especially all the scenes involving the killer. I think those are done as well as Scream usually does it. The killer still maintains that same dark humor and witty lines that you expect from Ghostface. It's a different voice actor, but I think he does a perfect job of capturing that same tone and attitude that makes Ghostface so iconic. And I think that's the biggest thing keeping this show together. The fact that Ghostface is still Ghostface. So while the mask and the territory may be different, it's still, for the most part, the same horror personality that we grew to love. I would even say that the kill scenes have all been done better than some of the movies. I think as far as the suspense, the atmosphere, and the way the killer toys with the victim before the kill is all exactly what you want out of a scream. The only thing holding this show back is the characters. Now, they do try to make the characters as much as scream as possible. They have a Sydney, a Randy, a Billy, a Gale, a Tatum, ETC. The problem is, they're all just generic prototypes of those characters. There's nothing about them that makes you want to care about any of them, other than trying to figure out which one of them is the killer. So overall, Scream the TV series is a mixed bag. It does deliver where it needs to, in that slasher area. But everything else is done so poorly that it just feels like a parody of itself. However, I think for what it does deliver, it is good enough to make it worth watching. Because it does deliver what you want out of a scream. You want Ghostface. You want the kills. You want the mystery. You want the psychological torment. You want the hot chicks. And this gives you all of that. So if you can overlook the character and the story, and you just want those thrills that only Scream can deliver, then I would definitely recommend checking out the show if you haven't already. So before I go, I guess I should get into predictions about who the killer or killers are. I think no matter who it is, 
It's going to end up being one of the adults and one of the kids. It's going to be one of the adults because I don't think Brandon James was really the killer. I think someone else was trying to frame Brandon James because of a crush he had on the mom or something like that. And it's going to be one of the teens because it's all linked to the scandal with Bella Thorne. So it's obviously personal for one of the killers. Plus, they have to be more tech savvy. And the teens would know more about that than some 40 year old. So based off those theories, I'm going to predict that the killers are... I want to say the teacher. There was just something about that guy that the very second he came on TV, I was like, yep, that's the killer. But I don't think his age matches with my theory that he was the original 1994 killer. So that would just leave the sheriff. But I don't know. He just seems a little bit too obvious. The other killer, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's the lesbian. She's the most tech-savvy out of all the others, and she has the most logical reason, and it would be a complete swerve. But for some reason, I can see them going the obvious route and making Billy the killer again. But who knows? Maybe you do. Who do you guys think is the killer? And what do you guys think about the show so far? Are you starting to get into it? Do you hate it? Do you think they wasted their time on this and might as well have made a Scream 5 instead? Let me know, and let me know if you guys want me to continue this series, talking about more episodes as they go on, or any other shows or movies you want us to talk about this coming Halloween season. Anyway, this has been MTO with the MTO More Reviews, saying yada yada yada, blah blah blah. Goodbye, Sydney.